at New York City's Central Park Zoo, Marty the zebra is walking on a treadmill, daydreaming about running free in the wild. He swings on vines, jumps, does flips and runs through a bunch of singing penguins. Marty is jolted back to reality by his best friend, Alex the lion who gets in his face and roars Alex tells Marty that there's something in his teeth, so Marty tells him to open his mouth and let Dr. Marty, DDS, have a look. Marty reaches in and extracts a glass ball with a red ribbon, on top it's a snow globe, with a miniature Alex figure in the middle. It's a 10th birthday present for Marty from Alex. Marty puts the globe among a bunch of other Alex-themed items that he'd been given over time the gift did not excite him, in fact, he's bored and upset that his life at the zoo limits his ability to enjoy life more fully by keeping his movements restricted. Today was not only Marty's birthday, but field trip day at the zoo, when all the school kids come it was one of Alex's favorite days, and he excitedly woke up his other friends, Gloria the hippopotamus and Melman the giraffe, so they could get themselves ready. Thinks he may have done Alex quickly counsels Marty to work on changing his attitude, suggesting that he approach every day in a fresh way. So, Marty decides he's going to be fresh today. Mason the chimpanzee starts his day off by rummaging through the waste can and coming up with a cup of coffee, bagel and newspaper, which he shares with his companion, Phil, another chimpanzee who can't speak and just uses sign language. Once the gates to the zoo open, Gloria, Marty and Alex go into action, putting on an exhibition of dancing, posing, and doing acrobatics for the visiting people they were very popular there are four penguins at the zoo who are in the process of digging an escape tunnel. They are using plastic spoons and popsicle sticks to dig with, but their tools keep breaking and slowing them down Marty is surprised when there's a small area of the grass in his compound that suddenly bulges upward and the head of Skipper the penguin appears, followed by those of his fellow penguins, Private, Kowalski and Rico one of them asks what continent this is, and Marty says, Manhattan they realize that they've somewhat missed the mark, as their destination was Antarctica, so they go back down to continue digging, but first swearing Marty to silence Marty, Gloria, Melman and Alex all get VIP treatments after the zoo closes, with the freshest of whatever foods they prefer, massages, and acupuncture. It's about as good as a life of confinement can be Gloria's birthday gift to Marty as a cake, while Melman gives him a thermometer, not telling him it's his old rectal thermometer until Marty had put it in his mouth to try it out. Marty's birthday wishes to go to the wild. When Marty tells his skeptical friends that the penguins are trying to escape to the wild, Alex replies, the penguins are psychotic. They engage in a discussion about where the nearest wild might be, and Gloria says she heard there are wild places in Connecticut. Alex tells Marty that there wouldn't be things like the fresh steaks he likes so much out in the wild. When Marty asks his friends if they aren't bothered by not knowing about the world out outside the zoo, they simultaneously say, no. Marty continues to be depressed, so Gloria makes Alex go and attempt to give him a pep talk. Alex knows that if he sings New York, New York, that Marty won't be able to resist joining in, so he does that. Marty does join in but the noise they make causes the other animals to start waking up and they shout out for Marty and Alex to shut up. Marty tries to convince Alex to join him in breaking out and traveling north to Connecticut. Alex isn't interested, besides tomorrow is Senior's Day, at the zoo and he doesn't want to miss that. Later that night, after the animals have all gotten back to sleep, Alex is wakened by Melman, who normally wakes up every two hours to pee. Melman tells Alex that Marty wasn't in his compound. Gloria comes over too and they all wonder where Marty might be. Alex grabs a nearby phone and calls 911, before he realizes we can't call the people. Marty is sauntering down a main street in downtown New York, headed for Grand Central Station. He stares at a woman walking by who is wearing a zebra-striped outfit. He spends some time ice skating at an ice rink, then stops and talks to a police horse who gives him directions to Grand Central. The police officer riding the horse calls into the precinct and asks if he can shoot the zebra. He is told no that it's animal control's responsibility. Melman lifts Alex over the zoo wall and lowers him to the street. Gloria just busts through the brick wall, and Melman follows her out. Mason and Phil also go out through the hole in the wall. They all go to the nearest subway station and get in one of the cars, scaring and upsetting all the passengers before boarding the train. Melway goes into a restroom, and comes out with one of those blue deodorizers in his mouth, he liked how it tasted. The animals ride the subway down to Grand Central Station which is the same place Marty went. Wherever Alex goes, the humans all freak out and run, which he doesn't understand because he's not after them at all there's an old lady who isn't afraid of him, and actually calls him a bad kitty and proceeds to start beating on him with her purse. When they find Marty, Alex rushes forward and tackles him, then hugs him, and finally chokes him, 
alternating in his emotions of concern, relief and anger. Marty tells Alex that he was going to come back to the zoo in the morning, after his little excursion to Connecticut. Hundreds of police show up and surround the animals. By then, the penguins and chimps have arrived and joined Marty, Alex, Gloria and Melman at the station. All the humans are on edge, and very afraid, especially of Alex. Except the old woman, who kicks Alex in the groin. Alex attempts to speak to the police and reason with them, but they don't understand him. So, he roars, in imitation of his popular daily zoo performance the animal control officer is finally able to steady his nerves enough to shoot Alex in the butt, with a tranquilizer dart. That puts Alex out. When Alex starts coming to, he's back at the zoo and there's an animal rights activist making a speech to a crowd about how the zoo animals should be returned to the wild. When they see Alex coming awake, they all get scared and run. Animal control again responds by shooting at Alex with multiple darts. One of them hits him in the paw and he goes back to sleep. The next time Alex wakes up, he's in a wooden crate, as are Marty, Gloria, Melman, the penguins and the chimps. They are on a large ship that is sailing to Africa. The boxes that the animals are in are all labeled, Kenyan Wildlife Preserve. Phil can read, so he signs that bit of information to Mason, who informs the rest of them. Rico coughs up a paper clip and uses it to pick the lock to the box holding the penguins. The four of them then waddle their way up to the bridge, disabling a crewman along the way, and administering a karate chop to the back of the neck of the captain of the ship, taking him out Alex, Marty and Glory all start arguing about their predicament and what they should do. Meanwhile, the penguins are on the bridge of the ship and struggling to figure out how to steer and navigate it. They more or less accidentally figure it out and Skipper orders hard right rudder. When the ship lurches, the crates holding Alex, Marty, Gloria, and Melman, all fall overboard and are set adrift as the ship moves away. After traveling some distance, the crate holding Alex starts rolling and bouncing. It comes to a sudden stop and breaks open, sending Alex head over heels onto a sandy beach. He comes up coughing, with a mouthful of sand. He's all alone and spends a long time roaming the beach, the beach, calling out to his friends, and at one point, he even calls for Regis, Kelly, Matt, Katie, and Al suddenly, there's the sound of another voice and Alex looks up to see a crate with four legs sticking out of the bottom, running around the beach. It's Melman. Alex hurries over and attempts to free Melman from the crate. He pulls Melman's neck way out, but that doesn't work, so he grabs a coconut tree log and prepares to ram it into Melman's stomach to force him out of the crate he steps way back, points the log, and starts running. Just before he slams into Melman, something distracts him and he stops short. Coming onto the beach through the surf is a large crate containing Gloria. Once the crate hits the beach, Gloria kicks one side of her crate out, freeing herself and at the same time sending Alex flying through the air and crashing down on top of Melman, smashing his crate and freeing him. There are two starfish and a crab covering Gloria's private parts, so she announces that the party's over, and they all scatter. Marty is next to arrive, only he does so in style, riding onto the beach on the backs of some dolphins. Alex is surprised to see Marty, but in short order he realizes that all this grief he and the others are experiencing is because of Marty, so he starts chasing Marty around the beach, intending to beat him up. Melman and Gloria intervene and the four of them begin wondering just where they are Melman looks around and offers his opinion that they are somewhere near San Diego, given the terrain and vegetation. Alex decides to chase Marty some more, because he doesn't want to be in San Diego where he likely won't be the star of the zoo anymore. Gloria stops Alex. Alex hears some sounds coming from deep in the jungle. It sounds like humans, so they all charge off towards the noise. Alex has trouble when he keeps running into things, including a large spider web, that causes him to fall behind. Meanwhile, Gloria, Melman and Marty come across a clearing that is filled with about a hundred lemurs of various sizes and ages. They don't recognize what sort of animals the lemurs are, just that they definitely aren't human. They watch the lemurs as they dance, sing, and generally carry on. Melman tells the others that he's counted 27 health code violations taking place. A lemur named Maurice calls for quiet and introduces the lemur King Julian the 13th King Julian then launches into a rap song, I like to move it. The lemurs are all enjoying themselves when suddenly an alarm is sounded and a lemur shouts that the fossa are coming. There are four fossa, which are animals that look like a cross between a cat and a dog, and prey on the lemurs. The lemurs all run. But the fossa catch a baby lemur named Mort and start making a salad, with Mort as the main ingredient. Alex finally catches up with his friends and as he gazes down on the scene before him, Gloria sees a large spider on his back. She picks up a stick, preparing to swat the spider. Before she can do that, the spider speaks, 
saying hello. That causes Alex to look and when he sees the spider, he freaks out, letting out a huge roar, which frightens the fossa and they run away, allowing the Mord lemur to escape. Meanwhile, Gloria starts hammering away at the spider on Alex's back, nearly beating him unconscious in the process. King Julian and his fellow lemurs don't know what to make of the strange animals who have suddenly appeared and scared the fossa away. He decides they must be aliens. To confirm whether the aliens are friendly or not, the king grabs Mord and tosses him towards them. Alex approaches Mord and attempts to make friends, but he's frightened of him and cries Gloria, picks up baby Mord and calms him down. The king now decides that these aliens are a bunch of pansies. King Julian, aka, the Lord of the Lemurs, steps forward and says, Welcome giant pansies. Alex decides that all the lemurs must be some sort of squirrels, because they act so weird. The king asks where are you giants from? And when Alex says, New York, the king says, all hail the New York giants. Alex asks the king about any people on the island, knowing that they need people to come.